Today on RJ's workshop, we're going to talk about how a dipstick failure led to all of this. Transmission failure and a lot of work. Welcome back to the workshop. My name's RJ. Today in the shop, we've got an 81 Chevy half-ton four-wheel drive pickup truck. It's a friend's uh, farm truck from up the street. I got uh, a call and found out, went and looked at it. I had never worked on the truck before. Uh, it has no forward gears, will only go in reverse. This particular truck is a 305 V8 with a turbo 350. Let's just go over a little bit of transmission, automatic transmission diagnosis right away. It will go re in reverse. So that tells us that we have line pressure meaning there's enough, the, the pump is working, there's enough fluid, and it'll build up enough pressure to at least go in some direction. Basically, if, if the car will move in some direction, you at least know you have some line pressure. Not necessarily correct line pressure, but some line pressure. So I went and looked at it. First thing you did, uh, started the truck, well first thing I did is pulled the dipstick and there's a, a little dab of fluid. On these transmissions you're supposed to check the uh, transmission fluid with the engine running and preferably warm. Uh, I spent, let the truck warm up for a few minutes, uh, obviously I couldn't drive it so I didn't get the transmission all the way up to temperature. Checked it, the fluid is a little bit low, maybe a quart, so I added a quart of fluid. Got in the truck, no change. Back up fine, no forward. Uh, even if you put it into L2 or L1, still no forward gears. Okay, decided time to bring it back to the shop. Um, so that was fun. I backed it down the road about seven miles. Uh, got the thing back to the shop here, checked the fluid again. Now it's warmed up, still looks good. Uh, next step, and I decided I'm going to do a pressure test on it, which I had actually never done a pressure test on an automatic transmission before. Um, and it was interesting. The first time I did it, everything showed, everything was kind of doing what it was supposed to, but all of the pressures were low. So I brought the truck inside, decided to drop the pan, take a look at it, see if the pan, bottom of the pan has got a half inch of clutch material sitting in there, uh, whatever the case, just to do a little bit of an inspection. Drop the pan, and the first thing I noticed was is not a lot of fluid came out. Usually on these transmissions, when you crack the bolts, it starts draining fluid right away. I didn't have that. And all, in all reality, the pan only was about half full which was very odd. Uh, I'll put a po picture in here. You can see the bottom of the pan is not pretty, but I've seen far worse. So I decided, well, before I pull this out of the truck and you know tear it all apart and everything, I'm just gonna refill it with some fluid and try it again. This is where things got interesting. This is where the dipstick comes into play. This is the dipstick out of the truck and if you look closely, right here, the cap is loose. I didn't notice it. Obviously, several other people didn't notice. The cap can actually slide up about a half of an inch. With that being up a half inch, the transmission is showing that it's full even when it's a half inch low on fluid, which is a fair amount of fluid. On this, this is another Turbo 350 dipstick, and you can see this is still uh, attached here. I refilled the transmission with fluid, 
filled it up to the proper level by holding the stick where it's supposed to. I haven't fixed this yet. Started the truck, ran the test again. All of the pressures are good, uh, right in, within range. So basically that's what that's telling me is, is this truck has been running low on fluid for a long period of time and the pressure's just, it hasn't been serviced in a while, the pressure's been a little bit low uh, working it, so the first thing to burn out was the forward clutch. In other words, this little grommet on the top of this dipstick is what led to this entire transmission failure. And it's an easy thing to overlook. The point of this video is just to show, you know, if you have something that comes in with a symptom, this thing didn't go forward, all the experts I talked to said put forward gears in it and it'll be good. They're absolutely correct. The forward gears are sitting right here and they are smoked. However, if I would have put this thing back together and not been paying attention to this little tiny detail, I'd have put it back together and it still would have been a half inch low on fluid at all times therefore putting stress on the transmission again because it wouldn't have the proper amount of fluid eventually the pressure would start to drop and it would be setting ourselves up to burn the transmission up again and needing a new set of forward clutches so let me bring you in and show you the smoke clutches doesn't really matter that much but it's kind of interesting carnage is cool to show you the difference here this is the i believe this is the direct drum and it's kind of hard to see with a camera shot, but there's about 80 or 90 thousandths of clearance in here. Here is the forward clutch, and that's got about a quarter inch of movement. Those clutches are smoked. Black, nasty, chunky, the steels have burns in them. I can feel it, it's got some warp in it. So, yep. Ford clutch, completely gone. So what's the takeaway here? My main point for this video is, is just to have you remember to pay attention to details. Look for what caused the failure. In this case, if I just put a set of clutches in it and put it, sent it down the road and didn't notice the dipstick or didn't fix the dipstick, I could be setting us up to redo, do the same thing over again. Maybe in a week, maybe in a year, maybe in five years. I don't know. Take a few minutes, look around, try to understand why something failed, not just that it failed. Um, I've seen too many times and had to repair too many people's, too many of other people's things that they saw that part A was broken, but didn't notice that parts B, C, and D were all wore out or misadjusted or something like that causing the failure. And then we end up redoing the exact same thing over again. Thanks again for coming out into the workshop with me. Please, if you would, subscribe, like, please add a comment. Uh, have you had a problem like this? Have you had a failure on something that you didn't notice what the cause was and it caused you to do it again. Um, hey, has somebody else done this and then put it into your lap after the fact? <laughs> uh, in this case, nobody did that to me. It just, um, I have seen that before and it can be a bit frustrating sometimes. So thanks again and uh, we'll see you again soon. Today on RJ's, Yee, kill myself. If I just keep talking like this, something good will come out eventually.